Hello and welcome to a high school football special on Midco Sports Network. This is Rise Above the Region 7 on 7 from the Sanford Sports Complex in Sioux Falls, South Dakota. And welcome, Tom Neen along with Jody Norstead. And it's late summer, Jody, and we're getting ready for high school football. Kind of an early taster. This is non-contact, yep. seven on seven, but we're getting a pretty good look at what's going to be coming up for some of these teams in the Dakotas. And a great partnership between the Riggs Academy and Midco Sports Network to put this on. This is the third year of this baby, and it's it's really taken off. And you, like you mentioned, we have 12 teams here at South Dakota, North Dakota, even a team from Iowa. Makes it a lot of fun. Seven on seven, it, obviously you're thinking, well, you know, what what kind of development is that? Yes. You, you don't have the offensive linemen, defensive linemen out here, but you have receivers, quarterbacks, running backs, all kind of getting that chemistry right now. And then on the defensive side, it's pretty important for these guys too. We've talked to all of the coaches. We'll have a preview on all of the teams that are here going into this. And for the most part, they say this is a really good chance late in the summer here to, to at least see how kids are going to compete. That's one of the big things. Yeah, and for some of these teams, I mean, there's three teams at least here, Lincoln, Fargo South, Shanley, they all have new head coaches, so it's very valuable for them to kind of see what kind of uh, chemistry that their team has. Check out the personnel. How do guys fit in? And a, a couple of new quarterbacks, too. This is very valuable for those quarterbacks that maybe were on the JV last year, going to be playing on the varsity this year, maybe with some of those guys returning. You want to develop that chemistry here early and good communication for the defenses. That's not, not disregard the defense in this thing. That's very important because these guys have to guard receivers for four seconds at a time with no pass rush. As you said, this is the third year for this event, kind of a collaboration between Midco Sports Network and the Curtis Riggs Football Academy. And uh, for more on that, here is Curtis with our own Carla Metz. Thanks, Tom. I'm here with the brains of the operation, Coach Curtis Riggs. And Coach, now you've been doing this for a few years. I know one of the biggest changes that you made from year one to year two is you moved it from Augustana's field onto the South Dakota Junior football field. So this is your second year here, but were there any other changes that you made coming into this year's tournament? It, you know, we, we didn't. We, we thought about dropping it down a few teams. Uh, we just felt like um, in the hot weather, it got to be a lot of games. Uh, but this year it worked out great. We, we kept 12 because everyone wanted to come back. We had a, quite a few teams that you know, were trying to request to get in. Um, so we felt like 12 was good. At Augie, they were great, but the field was just so hot playing on the turf. Here we have the, the field house where we can get indoors and we're, we're so accessible being right across the road from um, but what are the biggest benefits do you think that these teams have from participating in this tournament? You, you know, everyone thinks about the offensive side and, and how they'll be able to work on timing, <clears throat> their plays, the continuity. Um, but really, you think about defense is what is probably most beneficial here because you're not going to face much a passing in practice. So this is the one true time where they are able to see a passing offense come against them and prepare for it, coach it. Because in practice, you just can't simulate these reps. Try to anticipate those plays. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, definitely. you got a lot ahead of you today, so we'll let you get back to it. Thanks All so right. much for joining Thank you. us, guys. But over the last three years, Curtis has done a very, very nice job of making this event an attractive event for these teams to come to. Well, for those teams interested, here's a good insight into 7-on-7 seven -seven football. For the rules, we toss it over to Jay Elson. All right, guys, this is not football in its traditional sense, that is for sure. And it starts with the fact that we're not playing quarters here today. We're playing two halves, each of them with a 20-minute running clock. The playing field itself just 40 yards in length with a 10-yard end zone. Each possession starts at the 40-yard line. There is one first down available at the 20-yard line. After that, they get four plays to get it into the end zone. The quarterback has four seconds to release the football, and they do return to the line of scrimmage for the next down. There's no rushing the quarterback or crossing the line of scrimmage until after a pass is thrown. As far as the scoring is concerned, a touchdown is still six points. If you go for one, you get a one shot from the 10-yard line. If you go for two, you get one shot from the 15-yard line. Defense can score as well. They get three points for an inter interception plus possession again at the 40-yard line. But if they do return that interception for a touchdown, they get six points and the offense does come back out on the field. There is no fumbles whatsoever in this game. So that is a quick rundown of the rules out here today. We'll send it back to you, Tom and Jody. Thank you, Jay. So those are the rules. And now here are the teams and the setup for pool play. And for that, here's Jason Andera. Thanks, Tom. Well, we've got 12 teams this year in the Rise Above the Region 7-on-7 seven seven tournament. And here's a look at them. Four different pools of play. Each pool consists of an 11 AAA team from South Dakota, 
a smaller class South Dakota team, and then a team from out of state, either North Dakota or Iowa. Now, in pool play, it is a round robin, so each team will come out of pool play with a two-game record. The best record in that pool goes on to play the gold bracket in the afternoon. The next best record plays the silver bracket, and the other team gets to play in the bronze bracket. Throughout this show, we're going to get to know these teams a little bit better. Let's start with the Roosevelt Rough Riders, who are coming off of a 9-2 season. Roosevelt has produced three college-level quarterbacks in the past three seasons. This year's starter looks to be Carter Lohr, who is an athletic and versatile quarterback. He started last season in the defensive backfield. No matter who's taking snaps, they'll look to some very talented receivers, starting with Nathan Varnes leading the way. Barnes converted 16 receiving touchdowns to go along with two more rushing touchdowns in his junior year last year. The defensive backfield is a major strength for the Riders with Jackson Clark, Travis Pearson, Carter Lohr, Evan Warkentine breaking up passes in the backfield. This year, freshman Tyler Feldkamp should be able to join this group. But the biggest breakout star of this team could be SDSU recruit Mason McCormick, who moves to offensive center this year. This team has had high expectations year in and year out, getting preseason number one attention for the past several years. This year, they're still projected to be a top team. They do have the potential to beat anyone in the state. A promising 2016 season ended on a sour note for Fargo Shanley, losing on a last second Hail Mary in the state semifinals to Kindred. And the Deacons haven't forgotten about that. There's no doubt there's feel for the fire for these kids. You know, this class, you know, hasn't won a state championship yet, this senior class, and I think that's one of their goals is to get through. You know, you know, nobody wants to go through four years and not have a chance to win a state title, and, you know, they've been close. Their quest to win the program's first state title since 2012 will be under the leadership of a new head coach, Troy Mattern, who led Fargo South to a pair of Class 3A state championships in seven years, replaces Rod Oxendahl, who stepped down after last season. We understand the importance of tradition too as a coaching staff and that's one thing that we've even uh, elevated to the next level is, is bringing former people back and understanding the importance of, of the program and that these players understand that Chanley football is a lot bigger than them and they're just a small part of the tradition that's been here long before us. Mattern says he's been most impressed with the team's knowledge of the game and the speed of his squad. Junior receiver Haley Buckholtz will be a great weapon for first-year starting QB Kate Kuhneman, and so will senior tight end Jake Cava, who's one of the top high school prospects in the state. What I've been mostly impressed with Jake is his work ethic. You know, he's getting to that level where he's getting some D1 looks, and you know, a lot of those kids get, kind of can get complacent. But he's really taken to the next level and understands, you know, what it takes to be a Division One football player. And, and no doubt that it's feeding off with the other kids. You know, whether we're doing lifting in the weight room or on the field in practice, he, he brings it every day. You can expect the Deacons to be in the title conversation again this fall. The Hamlin Chargers make the move from Class 9B up to 9AA this season. Last year, Hamlin went 7-3, getting eliminated in the second round of the playoffs by the eventual champion, Cologne Cowboys. Bryce Williams steps in to quarterback this squad after playing mostly receiver last year. He's one of the seven seniors who will contribute on this Charger team. We got six um, starters on offense and defense coming back. We have 12. Um, overall, that it started at least one game last year, which is nice to have. So we got experience coming back, and then getting those younger guys reps here, though that's the type of stuff that I mean, it's going to help us jump into 9AA next year. While the Chargers will miss longtime leader Kale Steed, they will look to John Rowe and Chance Neiman to help lead the defensive side of the ball. On offense, Neiman and Williams should supply most of the yards and touchdowns for Hamlin. Leading things off in Pool A, Hamlin trying to play spoiler early against Roosevelt, but that would be easier said than done. Carter Lohr finds Nathan Varnes in a sea of powder blue for the opening touchdown. Hamlin counters Bryce Williams to Kirby Antonin. Check out the acceleration after the catch. The lead is cut to 8-6. Adam Dannenbring in a QB now for Roosevelt. The sophomore finds senior Demario Hester for a touchdown to make it 14-6 Williams. Comes right back to Hunter Barron for a 40-yard bomb. It's 14-14. Good battle going Dannenbring with a pretty pass to Jackson Clark for the score. Then it's Carter Lohr's turn again. On fourth down, he finds Seth Balloon. Rough Riders pulling away up 29-14. to 
A couple of nice interceptions close it out. Trevor Thu for Hamlin and Clark for Roosevelt. The Rough Riders prevail 38 to 28. Next up for Roosevelt, the date with North Dakota Class 2A contender Shanley. Dave Nelson instructing his squad in between games. I'm sure he drew up this defensive play. Devin McManus snatches the ball for an interception, and the Rough Riders score the first points of the game. But Shanley takes the lead on their only score of the first half. Caden Kuhneman at quarterback throws it up to his tight end, Jake Cava. Check out the catch by the big senior tight end. He had a great tournament. Just before the half, Seth Balloon makes the great diving touchdown catch with just 12 seconds on the clock. Roosevelt up 9-6 at the break. Shanley's defense is typically one of the best. Tom Erie at cornerback jumps the route and delivers a huge pick six to put the Deacons in front 12-9. That's how you impress a new head coach. Roosevelt rolled from that point though. Jet Vaughn, proving worthy of his first name, burns the defense for the score. Hester tacks on another for a 23-12 lead. Shanley scores late, but Roosevelt advances to the goal bracket with a 23-20 win. So this game would decide who gets to go to the silver bracket, either Hamlin or Shanley. Troy Mattern hoping to get his first win wearing red. Kuhneman is lefty quarterback, picks on our camera guy. Check out this pass right in front of the camera. Completes it to Talon Hoffer for the early touchdown. Then it's that Deacon defense again. Williams is intercepted by Cava, who is all over the place. He has a lot of area colleges looking at him after being named first team All-State as a junior. Shanley leads it 9-0. This time, Williams finds Josh Holliday to close the gap to 15-12, but Shanley poured it on the rest of the way for the 33-18 win, punching its ticket to the silver bracket. As we continue our tour through the season outlooks of the teams here at the Rise Above the Region Tournament, time to focus in on the teams in Pool B, starting with Sioux Falls O'Gorman. The Knights surprised some people last year under new head coach Jason Poppinga. They started out going 2-2, two and two, but then won five of their next six before falling to Washington by 10 points in the semifinals. It's not that they weren't our kids last year, but just the change of system, the change of you know expectations. I mean, everything was different. So I mean, it took us a long time. I mean, it was middle of the season before I think our guys felt comfortable that this is how things operate. Now that's not the case. We're already there. This year, senior quarterback Isaac Struck should be able to take over Poppinga's offense. He's going to be a first-year starter, and you know hasn't played a whole lot. You know, played one game in the Lincoln game last year when um, Hunter went down, but. You know, he's had a good offseason. He was playing basketball, he plays baseball, so you know, he's a multi-sport guy. And so we're excited to get him all for football for fall camp and you know, see what he can do in the field this year. All-around athlete Canyon Bauer put up some big numbers as a sophomore last fall, and he should be an integral part of the offense as a junior. And teams are going to look for him this year. So, I mean, the question will be is can he, can he still go out and make plays? And, you know, as you saw it here today, you know, he's coming out and, you know, make some nice catches, and he's going to be a big player for us. O'Gorman has consistently been a top-four team, including two trips to the Dome this decade. They have the pieces to make another deep playoff run this year. Last year, the T-Titans posted their best season in school history, making it all the way to the 11A championship game. Last year's team was really the team that kind of took it to the next level. And, uh, you know, you get the young kids excited. You know, and we had 85 kids at our, at our little guys' camp. You know, it was just great running around. They all have tight gear on. It's, it's neat to see. Although it's easy to point out all the players that they'll be missing, head coach Craig Clayberg likes what he has coming back. Hunter West will be our quarterback. Uh, he's going to be a junior. Uh, Carter Slykehouse uh, started last year running back and defensive back for us. He'll play again. Um, you know, we got some new faces that uh, Cade Clayberg will be another wideout, and then we got some new faces at the other running back and, uh, and the other wideout. So, you know, our, our experience is coming back on our offensive line, which usually doesn't happen a lot. But we got a couple of four year, gonna be four year starters, one will be a three year starter, pretty good sized guys, so we're excited about that. Class 11A seems to get tougher and tougher every year, but the Titans are excited for that challenge. It's fun, it's exciting, because every weekend or every Friday you're going to get a great team, and you better be ready to play. One team that certainly benefited from this year's rise above the region tournament is Fargo South. That's because for the first time since 2010, the Bruins have a new head coach. 
Tyler Kozel, a former Valley City State standout, spent the last three seasons coaching in Yuma, Arizona, and he's been spending his summer trying to get his new team schooled up. This benefits us because we're running all our same offense, defensive stuff, and uh, obviously being first year head coach, we need to get as much as many reps as we can on, on a daily basis. So it's great to get out here and compete and see what our guys got before we start. Kozel runs a spread offense, so the quarterback position is key. The EDC's leading passer from a year ago, Jack Pfeiffer, graduated, and now the keys to the Bruin offense have been handed over to Tanner Bois. They said that he didn't really have a solid quarterback in that spot. When I got up here, you could tell that kid was working. He's got very smart with what he does with his, um, his throws, his progressions. He's got a pretty strong arm. One huge asset for Du Bois will be his veteran receivers. Senior Tanner Beaton led the EDC with 58 catches last season while Jamin Howard recorded a team best seven touchdown catches. In addition, Dawson Wiesenberger is a tall target at tight end and looks poised for a strong junior season. We have a lot of great athletes returning on. Tanner, a second team All-State receiver last year, and he can do it all on the inside. We're gonna get him the ball in as many creative ways as we can. Uh, and then on, on the outside, we have, have three guys that are over 6'2 that can go up and get it. And, um, Victor Isaac, who's not here today, is another All-State kid, linebacker. And uh, there's a lot of good pieces in place right now. And just uh, we got to stay healthy, stay healthy in the fall. And I think we'll, we'll have a successful season. All right, in Pool Play, in Pool B, Fargo South was playing Sioux Falls O'Gorman. We'll pick it up late in the game. O'Gorman held off a Fargo South comeback to get a 35-34 win against the Bruins to start out 1-0 in pool play. In the second game of Pool B, T taking on O'Gorman. It's O'Gorman's Zach Norton, the sophomore quarterback, finds Max Tibbetts, who rolls into the end zone, 6-0 lead. Junior quarterback Hunter West finds Carter Slykaus, who tumbles in but hangs on for the touchdown. Score now 8-6. Then OG goes on a 15-0 run capped by this Iman legacy touchdown. T would answer with a nice catch and run by Wyatt Van Tall. Look at that. Grabs it, turns it upfield, gets into the game. Later in the game, though, Canyon Bauer of O'Gorman gets on the board. He gives the Knights a 12-point lead late in this one, but T would answer with 12 of their own points in a short amount of time. Nathan Oshner gets the touchdown catch right here, and a pick six for the junior also. Look at that, a little tumble, but uh, he picks up the, the ball and heads to the end zone. And before you know it, it's tied up. But it would be O'Gorman who gets the final score of the game to seal the victory. And they get the 36-29 win, earning the golden ticket to the gold bracket. In the final game of Pool B play, T takes on Fargo South, both looking for their first win of the morning. T gets it started out with Hunter West, who throws a strike to Carter Slykaus, putting the Titans up 6-0. Fargo South comes right back with their quarterback, Tanner Dubois. Nice shot into the end zone and down just by 1.67. And then T goes on a little bit of a roll. Trevor Cox puts this one into the end zone, finds a little chink in the armor in the coverage. And then in the back of the end zone, T picks up another touchdown. Luke Elkins grabs that one. Du Bois trying to get Fargo South back into this one. Great high point catch by Dawson Weisberger. The chemistry was working for the Bruins, but from then on, T took over the game. Wyatt Powers hauls in a touchdown. 32 to 20 is your final in this one. It was an interception free game, but T advances to the silver bracket. And for a look at what to look forward to this fall, here's Jody Norstedt and his North Dakota Power Rankings. Throughout the show, we'll sprinkle in our preseason power rankings, and we start on the North Dakota side of the border in nine-man. The defending champs from Thompson lost a lot of talent, but still returned standouts like Cole Sorby and Caden Schwabe, so I give them that two spot. Cavalier returns almost everyone from last year's eight and two squad, including first team All-State quarterback Austin Erlop. Lucky for us, those top two teams meet in the season opener. The realignment made things tough to predict Class A. I think a combination of dropping down from AA and being a traditional power is enough to warrant Beulah at number one. They don't have to worry about playing St. Mary's anymore. All-State running back Clayton Greenike will have the defending champs from Ellendale-Edgley-Cullum back in the mix. 
Here's the top half of the new look Class 2A since it's down to 10 teams now. St. Mary's and Shanley should be the front runners. Look for new additions Devils Lake and Jamestown to be competitive with the move down to AA. At 3A, give me two-time defending champ Century at the top of what should be a very competitive field. I think all three Bismarck schools will be tough. Same can be said for the two West Fargo teams. Don't sleep on Fargo South either. Can't wait to get the season started. Coming up, we'll have more highlights from pool play. But first, we had players mic'd up on the field all day. Here's a listen. This guy looks like a full-grown man, actually, this quarterback. He slings it, too. Oh! This one. Hey, there you go. That's how you squeeze. Good job. This Varsity Sports Special, Rise Above the Region, 7-on-7 seven seven high school football coverage on Midco Sports Network is presented by... Waterbury Heating and Cooling, Vernity, and Sanford Power Rigs Premier Football Academy. Welcome back to Rise Above the Region 7 on 7 Football. Sioux Falls, Lincoln, Harrisburg, and Sibley, Iowa make up Pool C here this year. And we have an outlook on the upcoming season for all three of those squads, starting with the Lincoln Patriots. The high point in a rocky Lincoln Patriots football season last year was a 31-28 win in the regular season finale over O'Gorman. That was a game in which Preston Eisenbraun threw two touchdowns despite playing with a bad knee injury. The big question is, will he be able to recover from that knee injury? Early reports show, yes, he will be able to. He's throwing a great ball this year. First year head coach Jared Fredenberg comes across town from Roosevelt to see what Eisenbraun and company have in store for this season. Getting to know the kids and getting to know how they can compete. Um, you know, it's all new verbiage, it's all new everything for them. And so they're kind of drinking from a fire hose right now and, and uh, we're trying to keep it simple and not give them too much and just seeing if they can compete and, and what their attitude's gonna be and, and just changing the culture towards you know where, where we wanna be. This Patriot team could have some firepower on offense. We, we have some players, um, you know, that our skill, our strength is going to be our skill kids. You know, the, our strength is going to be the guys that are here. Um, our weakness is just, you know, we, we're going to have some holes to fill in the offensive line and defensive line. And so, you know, we'll, we'll find some guys and we'll just, we'll just, we're going to compete every night and we're just going to, no matter who we play, we're going to come out and we're going to compete and we're going to play hard and, and play physical. and and get Patriot football to that level. The Harrisburg Tigers took a huge step in the right direction last season, advancing all the way to the 11 AA title game. And more than half of their starters from last year are back this year to make another title run. Very hungry. Um, you get in there, we played an outstanding Mitchell team last year in the Dome. Um, the senior leadership, you know, they had a ton, uh, almost 10 on both sides of the ball. Uh, so we're looking to be at that point, you know, at the end of the year again, be back in such the same situation. Um, but this time we need to bring one back. It's been a while um, for Harrisburg to bring a state championship back, so now's the time. A lot of experience graces the offensive backfield with Hunter Headley returning for his third season at quarterback. He's hungry to lead the Tigers back to title contention. It really brought us closer together, uh, taking a tough loss. Um, it shows us what we need to do to get back to get back to the dome and uh, that we need to pull through this year. Um, so it's kind of just a, a stepping stone and uh, our final goal. Running back Jack Anderson is the all-time school leader in single season rushing yards at Harrisburg. He'll line up again to tack on some more big numbers this year. For as strong as this offense might seem, it could be the defense, especially the secondary, that could lead the team. Um, defensively, I'm bringing back um, Logan Warzek at middle linebacker and Mike Curry at outside backer, and then all of our DBs are back. Uh, Jackson Garms, um, Peyton Voss, and then we got Cole Tigan, um, and then Nick Shrado played a lot last year as well. So a lot of senior leadership, you know, seven on defense coming back and six on offense. The lone Iowa representative at this year's Rise Above the Region tournament is hoping to take some big strides this fall. Sibley O'Cheedon finished 3-6 and six last year, but felt they were much closer to being a playoff contender than their record showed. You know, honestly, our three wins, you know, could easily have been six or seven. We had a lot of games where it was a, uh, we had a lot of possessions where critical time in the game and we would turn the ball over. 
or we would fumble or we would throw an interception or something like that. Um, we were right there with a lot of these teams that we played with. The expectation is that the players returning learned from those mistakes and are ready to put it all together in 2017. We have some size, we have some experience, but there's certain key positions that we're going to be really testing the water and that's what's really showing us here right now today. Moving on to Pool C play and to start the day we've got Sibley Ocheden taking on Harrisburg. Let's go to the action. Sibley Ocheden, the Generals looking for a win. Harrisburg made it to the finals last year in this 7 on 7 tournament. Let's get it started with Preston Marco dropping back for the Generals. He finds Cole Newman for the touchdown. They were up 12-6 early. And then look at that. Tip ball. Hunter Headley delivered one, but uh, not exactly to the right spot. But it works out. They come back 12-12 before you know it. And then Harrisburg keeps piling on the touchdowns. Hunter Headley looking right in the middle of the field, finding his target. And he's thrown three touchdowns before you know it. Let's look at uh, the Generals coming back. Their quarterback, Preston Marco, finds Colvin Jennis. And then Harrisburg coming right back in the corner of the end zone. They lead 28 to 20 at this point. Next, very next play here. Marco looks toward the end zone, but look at that. It is picked off. Harrisburg takes the lead and would keep it for the rest of the game. Pile on another touchdown. Hunter Headley threw six touchdowns in this one, and they get the 38-35 win. The rest of our Pool C highlights got lost somehow. We apologize to all of you who played in Pool C, but we want to assure you that Lincoln did do well in pool play. We were able to salvage this one Snapchat. Uh, it showed Lincoln with a nice pass right before halftime to take a nice lead on Harrisburg. They eventually would win that game 33-23, and they also got by Siblio cheating 39-12. So Lincoln going 2-0 and advancing to the gold bracket. We've got a lot more Lincoln highlights coming up later in the show in the gold bracket. The Brandon Valley Lynx have a habit of having one of the top quarterbacks in the state every year. This year, the job is an open competition up until the start of the season. Sophomores Thomas Skolton and Ty McCann are contenders, as well as senior Mason Van Weston. But this team could continue the Lynx trend of pounding the ball down the field as their primary source of yards. Over the last few years, we've had a lot of decent linemen and so we've kind of morphed into a, more of a heavy run team with a lot of play action, um, some unbalanced sets and, and different things like that. We're going to try to power. And, uh, you know, I, I believe it was better for our team to be doing that at this point. Look for another big line in Brandon Valley with SDSU recruit Max Howard leading the way and some talented backs like Braden Peterson. Yeah, Braden rushed for 1,100 yards in a part-time um, shared position with uh, Alex Wickersham last year. And, to, uh, you know, so we had two kids that were right around 1,000. Uh, so to have him back now, he'll carry the ball a lot. The Lynx defense features one of the best players South Dakota's seen in a long time. Cade Tervere is gearing up for another monster year on the defensive line. I know he's a sack record holder for the school and he had three picks and two of them for touchdowns and just all sorts of weird stats but he um, uh, he's a great player for us and we just turn him loose and, and but he, uh, he won't come off the field on defense. Last season class 9AA featured some of the best talent we've ever seen in that class. The Gorillas took a 9AA schedule and shredded it up last year on their way to a 12-0 record and a state title. Bad news for the rest of the class, many stars from that 2016 squad are back to start this season for the Gregory Gorillas, including quarterback Andy McCants, who sets the tone. Uh, he comes over here as who falls, you know, once a week or so. He's been over here several times since the season's been over, just working here with, with Riggs. And, uh, he puts a lot of time and effort into it, and, and he started since he's been a sophomore. And he's always thrown such a great ball. You know, I think if he were a couple inches higher, we'd be talking about some major colleges looking at him. And I really, that's his, that's his passion, that's his hope, that's his dream. He wants to play college ball. Opponents also have to contend with Jade Vanderwerf, another special player on this guerrilla team. And he wants to go on and play on Saturdays next year too. And, and both of those kids, you know, we talk about their talent and these things that they do on the football field, but off the field, I mean, they're the best kids you could ask for. And I'm just very lucky to be able to coach kids like this. 
While on paper it may seem that Gregory is the overwhelming favorite in 9AA, they know everyone is going to bring their best to stop them. The 2016 season can be summed up as a year of growth for the Mandan football program. The 2-7 record doesn't tell the complete story of what last season will mean to this year's squad. It wasn't that we necessarily wanted to give the kids a lot of reps, but we needed to because we just didn't have the numbers in the senior class. Uh, so this senior class has stuck together. They've they've maintained that nucleus. So it's it's been nice just because, yeah, this the senior group didn't have a whole heck of a lot there for us last year. We definitely were more on the younger side last year. So now that we're older, I think we have more experience and everybody's just a lot Better. The passing game will be a strength for the Braves. A veteran offensive line will be in front of second-year quarterback Caden Krause, who will have a pair of tall weapons to throw to in twin brothers Trey and Cameron Steckler. Those guys are huge benefits. Throw it up to them, they can go and up so high and get the ball for you. It's a good option. Even with the weapons on offense, the Braves know they need to be better on defense. They struggled in that department last fall, but the good news is that they'll be very experienced on that side of the ball, and everyone is hungry for wins. This group of seniors, as their whole career has been very competitive. Everything they do, they compete. Um, we're going to be a scrappy team. It really comes down to if we get a few breaks, beat a, beat a couple teams that we shouldn't, uh, that will be the big thing. But this team is going to be competitive. That's the fun thing about it is they like to compete. A season opening win against Central would be a big confidence boost. The Braves haven't won an opener since 2012. Opening game of Pool D featured Brandon Valley and Mandan, schools separated by over 400 miles. It took a while for the passing games to get on the same page. This ball is tipped up and intercepted by sophomore Austin Fry for three points, but the Braves give those points right back. Mason Van Westen picks off the deep ball for a trio of points for the Lynx. Then the offenses start to find a rhythm. Ty McCann right on target to Cole Siegfried for an 11-3 lead. Mandan's Caden Krause with the quick response, a perfectly thrown deep ball to Keaton Meschke. It's 11-9 Brandon Valley after the failed conversion. The quarterbacks were putting on a show. McCann squeezes the pass in between the defense to tight end Cade Turveer in the back of the end zone. He's a big time prospect. That puts Brandon Valley up eight. Mandan assistant coach Van Bardell trying to get his guys fired up at the half and the players respond well. Krause waiting until the last possible second to throw it on a rope to Joey Clark. Tying the game at 17. Brandon Valley regains the lead here as Van Weston heaves it toward the end zone. Braden Peterson comes down with it to push the lead to 23 to 17. McCann back in a QB for the Lynx, but check out the diving interception by Isaac Watson. Great play by the senior to draw the Braves within three points. Moments later, they take the lead. Fry, who had the interception earlier, hauls in the touchdown to make it a 26-23 Mandan advantage. We finally start to get some short touchdown passes. Brandon Valley goes to the flats. Peterson takes it in for his second score. Links up 29-26, and the boys in red seal it with a pick. Brandon Valley comes out on top of a great pool play battle, 32-26. The Lynx next test would be nine-man power Gregory. The Gorillas weren't messing around. Andy McCants to Jade Vanderwerf. Get used to hearing those two names. That's a big gain, and it sets up this touchdown. Blake Bowes catches it in traffic and crosses the goal line for a 6-0 Gregory lead. The deep ball worked well for Brandon Valley against Mandan, but it doesn't here. Vanderwerf with another big play, intercepting the pass for three more points and the ball. Needing a spark, Mason Van Westen provides it for Brandon Valley. He intercepts the pass and watch him turn on the Jets to complete the pick six. They tack on two more for the extra point and make it a 9-8 Gregory lead. But that's as close as it gets. The Gorillas take over. McCants rifles it to Vanderwerf again. The playmaker makes it a 17-8 lead and Gregory pulls away for the 36-18 win. Next up for Gregory, a border battle with Mandan for a chance to secure a spot in the gold bracket. Andy McCann's continuing his great play, threads the needle to J.J. Beck for the opening touchdown of the game. A little misfortune for Mandan leads to a turnover. The ball goes off the receiver's hands and into the waiting arms of Blake Bowes. The interception makes it a 9-0 Gregory advantage. Even takes out one of the tournament workers. Great form on the push-ups, by the way. 
More offense from McCants and the Gorillas. Great catch made straddling the end line. That makes it a 17-0 lead. Mandan had a tough time finding passing lanes, but Krause lofts it up and lets his receiver make a play on this ball. A one-handed juggling touchdown catch trims the lead to 17-6, but Gregory had gold bracket on its mind. The Gorillas win in a landslide, closing out a dominant pool play session with a 43-14 victory. As we head to break, here are some more sounds from the field. And taught and compete and make plays. When you play good teams, somebody has to make plays. Bottom line, it's not going to be perfect. It's not going to be easy against good teams. Make plays when you get an opportunity. Let's win the second half and win the game. Let's go. Let's hold them. We're good. No fly zone. This Varsity Sports Special, Rise Above the Region, 7-on-7 seven seven high school football coverage on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. Welcome back here to the Rise Above the Region 7-on-7 seven seven tournament as we've reached the final four. It was the old-fashioned blue versus red. O'Gorman squaring off with Gregory for the right to play in the championship. Fast start for Gregory. Andy McCants getting some big-time college looks, and here you see why. The bomb to Caleb Stuckel right on the money. 6-0 Gorillas. O'Gorman's probable starting quarterback this fall, Isaac Strzok, was playing baseball, so he wasn't here. The Knights used a couple of their backup guys, and Gregory takes advantage. The interception by Stuckel makes it 9-0 Gregory. Then it's McCants again this time to a squatting John Bakke for a 15-0 Gregory lead. The Gorillas keep pouring it on. McCants to Jade Vanderwerf. Great catch, take another look. One-handed, Vanderwerf's grab makes it 21-0 Gregory. O'Gorman eventually gets on the board. Sophomore quarterback Zach Norton to Canyon Bauer. Bauer will be a junior this fall and one of the best all-around backs in South Dakota. Gregory going back to work. McCants to J.J. Beck, a junior do-it-all guy. It's 28-6. The Gorillas tack on another interception and two more touchdowns. They beat O'Gorman 43-13 and move on to the championship game in the gold bracket. All right, let's take a break from highlights to tell you about a unique high school football combine that Curtis Riggs offers to area athletes to help them in their recruiting process. Well, it's a, it's a good way to start the process of the whole recruiting. Um, you know, it's so difficult. The coaches travel all over the state trying to meet with these kids, and it's really hit or miss. I mean, they're so involved with extracurricular activities. Coaches will show, and the kids are gone. We thought, what is a way that we can start that process and that we can have them come in, test, work out, and let the coaches start that first step of the process of recruitment. Each spring, the Sanford Power Riggs Premier Football Academy tests over 100 of the area's best high school sophomores and juniors in running, lifting, jumping, and agility. Here's a look at this year's top marks in the combine in the 40-yard sprint there were four athletes that went sub 4-7, with sprinter Colin Bryson of Lincoln leading the way. In the pro agility test, change of direction and mobility are very important, and Nathan Varnes opened some eyes with an outstanding time of 3.94. Of the players that elected to bench press 225 pounds, Watertown's Dane Stahl put up the most reps with 21, while long-armed Mason McCormick of Roosevelt wowed coaches with his 19 reps. In the vertical jump, Braden Peterson of Brandon Valley really got off the ground, skying 34 and a half inches for his vertical as the top mark. I have a complete list of all the results on my blog at midcosn.com if you're interested. Here's a list of some of the top senior recruits in South Dakota this year, many of which have already verbally committed. The list starts with Will Farniak of Sioux Falls, Washington. He made it official. He'll join his older brother, Matt, in the Big Ten to play at Nebraska next year. The quick and strong offensive center continues as the fourth Farniak brother to play FBS football. I got along with everyone there, and that was probably the best part is really just knowing everyone and just feeling at home with everyone. South Dakota State harvested a great crop of athletes from in-state. Max Howard of Brandon Valley has a near seven foot wingspan and Roosevelt center Mason McCormick also bolster the offensive line as a future Jack. Washington has three players heading to Brookings, tight end Zach Hines, linebacker Seth Benson and kicker defensive back Brock Walker all head north. 
Harrisburg quarterback and linebacker Hunter Headley will join his brother as he committed to USD earlier this year. And Gregory's dynamic duo of Jade Vanderwerf and Andy McCants both headline a list of uncommitted players who are highly sought after by college scouts. For a look at some of the top recruits in North Dakota, here's Jody Norstead. Thanks, Jandy. The 2018 class of seniors in North Dakota looks to feature another good crop at a variety of positions. The big name is NDSU commit Bartholomew Ogbu from Shiloh Christian. The 6'6", 210-pound defensive end is expected to wreak havoc on opposing quarterbacks this season. Another elite defensive lineman is Williston's Dylan Evans. He has D1 offers from NDSU and Idaho. Shanley's Jake Cava looks to be a Division I prospect. He's a nice size target at tight end and has really excelled at the linebacker spot, the position that he'll likely play at the next level. He and South's Victor Isaac both attended Nike's The Opening Football Camp earlier this year. Isaac was first team All-State at linebacker last season after leading the EDC with 86 tackles. Several D1 schools are interested in him as well. Another player already committed on this list is Red River's Tyler Berrien. The 6'3 wide receiver says he'll walk on for Bubba Schweigert's team at UND. Now here's Tom with highlights from our second Gold Bracket semifinal game. Sioux Falls Roosevelt, Coach Nelson and his guys have won this 7-on-7 seven seven event the last two years. Sioux Falls Lincoln, new head coach this year, is former Roosevelt assistant Jared Fredenberg. And this game comes down to the final play, but it starts with a bit of controversy. Is this a catch? Is that a touchdown? Tegan Salava got it. He got one foot down. Ball got knocked loose, though. Is it a touchdown? The referee says yes. Lincoln up 6 nothing. Another sweet spiral there from Preston Eisenbron. Another great catch by Salava. Patriots up 12 nothing. Carter Lohr takes over at quarterback this year for Roosevelt. Nathan Barnes is back at wide receiver. That's a touchdown. And it's a 12-8 Lincoln lead, and then some defense. A Roosevelt freshman, Tyler Feldkamp. That is a pick three. You get three points for an interception. Roosevelt within a point at 12-11. Lincoln, though, with a pick of their own. Malik Red gets his gloves on that. That's three, and it's 15-11. Patriots in the lead. Another interception, though, for Roosevelt, and this is a great play by Nathan Varnes. Gets Roosevelt back within a point. And the Raiders are revved up. Good job, buddy. Good catch. Good catch. Good catch, baby. Good catch, baby. Down to the final two minutes now. Another great ball by Eisenbron. Uh, Zach Hansen with the catch this time. And Lincoln in the lead, 22-14. So Roosevelt on its final drive of the game. Carter Lohr on the snap. He got four seconds to get rid of it. Hooks up with Varnes again, second touchdown grab of the game to go with that interception for Varnes. Lincoln leads 22-20, so Roosevelt's got to go for two. Kim Nelson making the call. Left 62. All right. Left 62. 62. Right. Anything better? Right. All right. Last play. Riders again looking for Nathan Varnes, but he is wrapped up by two defenders. Malik Red in coverage again, and the Patriots pull it out. Lincoln wins 22-20 to advance to the Gold Bracket Championship. Thanks, Tom. Time now to drop our first edition of the South Dakota High School Football Power Rankings. We begin in 11 AAA, where everybody expects Washington to win another title. So many stars back. Their quarterback and running back were both sophomores last year. They are juniors. Their senior class is stacked. It's going to be a one-horse race, in my opinion. In Class 11 AA, Harrisburg got to the pinnacle but couldn't take home the title last year. This year, I think they've got a good shot at that. But Pierre brings back one of the best quarterbacks in Peyton Zabel, so watch out for the Govs. In 11A, Madison has become a traditional football power in a class where there are so many traditional football powers, but I think Madison gets it done again. West Central, not far behind. In Class 11B, Winter made it look so easy last year. Won't be that easy this year. They've got a tough go of it. I still think they're the number one team, but Bridgewater Emory Ethan just a step behind. In nine-man football, 9AA looks like it's Gregory's to lose. They were so good last year, bring their best players back, but Parkton moving down to nine-man football could give them some problems. In class 9A, I think Canastota and Howard are your two-team race. 
Canastota now co-ops officially with Freeman, brings a lot of studs back, and they've been so good at 9-man when they're in Class 9A. And in 9B, we've got two returning champs, Cologne defending the 9B title, and Coleman Egan drops down from 9A to 9B, also coming off of a championship season. Those two teams will be the teams to beat. Coming up later, we'll have highlights of the Gold Bracket Championship game, but right now, let's take advantage and listen in to our mics on the field. Allie, 63 curl. You got the five out, you got the 10 curl. All right, Liz, Liz, Allie, 63 curl on one, ready? Hey, let's go, come on, let's go. Hey, sir, you show me All right, all right. Hey, come on, boys, you gotta put up points, let's go. Hey. Ready? Ten. This Varsity Sports Special, Rise Above the Region, 7-on-7 seven seven high school football coverage on Midco Sports Network is presented by Dakota Land Honda. This Varsity Sports Special, Rise Above the Region, 7-on-7 seven seven high school football coverage on Midco Sports Network is presented by... Waterbury Heating and Cooling, Vernity, and Sanford Power Rigs Premier Football Academy. So we are on to the championship game now in the gold bracket, and it's going to be Sioux Falls Lincoln out of the largest 11-man class in South Dakota taking on Gregory out of the 9AA class in South Dakota. And one of the largest animals. So they might be a small school, but the gorillas, I love that nickname. See, I'm a North Dakota guy, so I don't get that. Uh, so much uh, here in Lots the Lots of history. got a big, big gorilla right outside the oh, front gate at the stadium. It's that's beautiful. awesome. The thing I'm most impressed with is they're a nine-man team, so they only have nine players even here for seven-on-seven. Seven. So only two players are getting arrested at a time, and they've been able to really pull some things off. Andy McCants has been throwing the ball all over the place, a great quarterback for this Gregory team. So it's been fun to watch. And Sioux Falls Lincoln, you know, just barely getting by Roosevelt. They had to hold them off at the end, but now we have our championship set. Gregory and Sioux Falls Lincoln in the Gold Bracket Championship. Three games, three wins so far for each team. So here we go in the final, and they go back and forth in this game, match each other touchdown for touchdown. Lincoln scores first, Preston Eisenbron to Tegan Salava. Are you not entertained? It's 7 0 in Patriots. And then Gregory Andy McCants to Caleb Stuckel. We think got in that time. Didn't get the extra point, though. It's 7-6. to six. Patriots again. Eisenbron was outstanding all day. So was Salava. Another catch, another connection. Patriots up 13-6. The Gorillas getting everybody in on the action, too. Uh, McCants to J.J. Beck on that touchdown. Lincoln still in the lead, 13-12. And then a great shot of a great defensive play. Stuckel reaching in, breaking that up for the Gregory defense. But Lincoln gets back in the end zone. Eisenbron to junior wide receiver Zach Hansen. 19-12, Lincoln in the lead. But Gregory will level it up finally. McCants to Blake Bowes this time. They get the two-point tight at 19. Lincoln takes the lead back to spiral perfection from Eisenbron, and then a great catch by sophomore wide receiver Wyatt Vandentop. And Lincoln in the lead, 25-19. split. JJ, JJ, you know what to do? Just tell us. Come here. And then, after a pep talk, the Rillas take the lead. McCants to John Bakke, fourth different guy with a touchdown catch in the game for Gregory. They go up 26-25. Lincoln goes back in front, though. Eisenbron spreading it around as well. Victor Games, the fourth Patriot, to make a touchdown grab. Lincoln in the lead, 32-26. Gregory ties it in the closing minutes. McCants to J.J. Beck, game tied 32-32. And Lincoln will get the ball back in the final 30 seconds. Clock running, taking a shot in the end zone, incomplete there. Last play of the game could be the winning touchdown. But instead, that is the winning interception. Jade Vanderwerf picks it off. That is three points in seven on seven. And McCants and the Gorillas show them what's up. 35-32, Gregory over Sioux Falls Lincoln. Thanks, guys. Andy, uh, just got to talk about that last play. You said you were in on that. Uh, just kind of tell us a little bit about what was going through your head. How? Just take us through that play. Well, I mean, like, they're on the 40-yard line, you know, so it's the last second. They're going to go deep. They have to try to score. So, you know, they're throwing deep. You know, we go to quarters coverage, you know, and I hang with the tight end, and then, you know, Jade comes over and makes a great play and 
catches it and really just saves the game for us. Yeah. All right, now is this going to be something that you're going to talk about after, but uh, it's got to feel pretty good to get a win over some of these 11-man schools. Oh, yeah, for sure, for sure, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thanks so much. Congratulations again, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Carlo. Let's take a look at some of the top plays. There were some extraordinary passes, some great catches, and some interceptions that we have to take a second look at. Two whips in the street might pull up on you. One black, one red, both better on C. Zero to 100 real fast, staying on you. Yeah. Probably why your girl staying here, laying on me. Oh, I've been here way too long, I'm just wilding on them now. Didn't even have a phone, now I'm dialing on them now. Couldn't even see the light, now I'm shining on them. Yeah. Back before I had a car, now I'm buying yeah. on them. Right off the lot, off cash. Right off the lot, off cash. Right off, right off the lot, off cash. You, you already know, don't ask. That was some of the best of the best from this year's 7-on-7 seven seven Rise Above the Region Tournament. Back to Carla Metz, who has the winning coach, Brian Almendinger. Thanks, guys. Coach, definitely some tight competition, especially in this championship game. What an ending to that game as well. Um, but let's just kind of start off. What do you think you, your team did well today, especially in this championship game? Well, they never they never quit. You know, uh, Sioux Falls, uh, Lincoln jumped on us right away and just kept after us. And, um, you know, they made some plays, and it was kind of back and forth. And we never quit and stayed with what we were doing. And, and the guys just, you know, battled hard, I thought, all day long and uh, just going to be more proud of these nine young men here from Gregory, South Dakota. Yeah, that's what it's that's what it's all about. And um, really, anywhere I went today, let's talk a little bit about your quarterback, Andy McCants. Anywhere I went today, there were people, wow, did you see Gregory's quarterback? He's really good. Uh, definitely a steady guy, got a strong arm. What does his leadership do for your team? It's been tremendous. Um, as I've told the other people, he's probably the most passionate about football a player that I've ever had. It's nice for me because we're at the point with, with our relationship to where even during this deal uh, today, you know, he'll come over the sideline and say, hey, coach, I think the safety is going to roll on this and we can get this route on the backside and say, go ahead and call it. You know, and it's awesome to have that trust in the, in the young man. So. All right, coach. Well, congratulations. Definitely gives you a lot of confidence heading into the season. We'll send it back to you. Thank you, Carla. Thanks, Coach. Thank you to all of the coaches and the players. Thanks to Curtis Riggs and everybody here at the Sanford Sports Complex. And thank you for watching Rise Above the Region on Midco Sports Network. One, two, three, three.